CSM is giving you free courses. That's right, free courses each month just for being part of the NASM family. Learn about everything ranging from nutrition to strength, weight loss to stress relief, and everything in between. Click the link in the bio for information and to claim your free course before they're gone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Random Fit. I am Wendy Batts, and I'm here with my friend and colleague, Mr. Ken Miller. How are you today? I'm good, Wendy. Always good to see you. How are you? I am living a dream. You know, woke up today, so it's a good day. <laughs> uh, how about yourself? Oh, uh, I'm here with you. What could be better? I, you know, I don't know. Let me know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, today's topic, I, you know, I think is going to be very appropriate. Uh, we're talking specifically about summertime activities, um, being outdoors, and things that you want to take in consideration when you are not only playing but doing activities of daily living. I mean, some of this is kind of like a no-brainer, but also it's really good to have the reminders of why some of this stuff is so extremely important, especially um, because summer is here. We have officially um, hit, I know in Georgia, 90 degrees and above. So um, <laughs> even though we're still in spring, it feels like it is definitely uh, summer with humidity. <laughs> I don't know about California, though. I mean, for you guys, you're kind of rocking awesome temperatures all the time. Uh yeah, no, no complaints here when it comes to California. Well, that's why we we have the sunshine tax. So we we pay for the 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 sun without the the heat and humidity. Well, some parts get the heat without the humidity. But uh, growing up in Southern California, San Diego, um, definitely got spoiled during the summers. And you know, when you can get by, you know, through your twenties with with uh, just a pair of flip flops and shorts. Um, you know, you, you you come from a good spot, but uh, the as as good as the weather may be, you still can't um, be lax with how you prepare yourself for all things that you need to do to to stay stay safe to to have all that fun, right? But you def you have more to be worried about um, as far as preparation goes uh, when you do go outside. Well, I think, you know, when we look at, you know, where I've lived and, you know, and even where I'm at today, I mean, this weekend, you know, I know it was a, a you know, it was a, a busy weekend, but we also made a lot of time to do some things around the house. And I spent six hours cleaning my deck, um, hands and knees, getting everything all clean <laughs> and getting kind of the winter as well as all the, you know, the springtime fun of pollen and everything off of my deck. And then, you know, and then going outside and, deadheading roses and, you know, picking weeds. And, you know, you think about yeah. that. And I was like, gosh, I was outside for so long. And I mean, I had on a hat, but, you know, I didn't even think because the temperature was actually, we, we had great weather this weekend and mm -hmm. we um, had lower temperatures than usual. And I'm thinking to myself, I put sunscreen on every day, like on my face, but I didn't on my body. And I'm like, my shoulders were just crushed. And I, and, you know, but I didn't, I didn't feel like I was getting burnt. And I think even when we're thinking yeah. about activities, and even when you're doing yard work or different things outside, you guys have to think that even though we're going to be out for a long period of time, it may not feel like you're burning, but it is really important to take care of yourself because, you know, you really don't know. And I know the beach is a big one. You really don't know how bad it's going to be until after the fact. And then there's really not much you can do except for just pray you don't peel. <laughs> right. I remember. So when, when it came to this episode, one of the stories I have to share is uh, <clears throat> the one time I, well, I, I some years ago, well, almost 20 years ago, I went to uh, on a trip to Mexico with with some friends, and I got there for I was a day ahead of my my friends. And one of the things that I did is say, "Hey, the sun's out, it's warm. I'm going to go by the pool. I have some downtime. I'm going to bring I'm going to bring a book with me." Well, you know, I was I was a little tired from the flight, so when I got there, I just went to the pool. And guess what? I didn't put on sunblock. Right. And uh, on the first day I burned. Right. And I was there for four days. So on the <laughs> first day I burned and ruined the next three days after that, because I had to have a sh I mean, it was I had never been burned like that before to where it was it hurt to touch. Mm -hmm. Right. Any from and I and of course, I what did I do? I wasn't even out there that long. 
And that was the deceiving part. You know, you can, you can, um, you know, d- dive into the pool, get wet and cool down that way. But nothing, nothing was stopping the rays of the sun. <clears throat> so I, uh, I ruined a trip uh, because I spent, no kidding, 20 minutes of, of true, true exposure to that Mexican sun and just ruin the rest. Cause I, I just didn't think I thought, okay, I'm young. You know, I've never, I'm, you know, I've got Brown skin, you know, I'm, I've never really burned before, but I went to a, a different latitude where the sun was much stronger than where I was coming from. And um, you know, no base tan, right. <laughs> to, to prepare me, uh, whatever that means. But uh that's one of those things as we as we get excited about going on these trips, going to the beaches, going to the lake, going to the river, um, any body of water. Um, the first thing you do before you even get into the car is what I tell my clients is you got to put on the sunblock SPF 15. The second you think you're going to go outside. Right. And that's, you know, for me, as I'm getting older, it's you know, I like to have this young, smooth skin as long as <laughs> I possibly can. So SPF what? SPF 30 is what I put on daily now. Oh, I was going to say, you know what, uh, there's, there's two different things. So I, I've had the same similar story. I wasn't in Mexico. I was actually at the beach. I was on my senior trip and, you know, my mom was hundred percent Greek. So I have all the skin, same thing. I mean, I would turn red, but I immediately would brown. And, um, and so I never really had some of the issues that some of my friends have who were, you know, lighter skin and they would burn and then just be miserable for days on end, even with applying a bunch of sunscreen. And, uh, and I had put sunscreen all over my body, but I did not put it on my face. And so what ended up happening was I burnt so bad on my face that it was like peeling. And I looked like I just had different, Mm -hmm. like a face mask coming off. It was disgusting. And so, you know, but once you do that one time, you are literally going to have issues the rest of your life with that kind of stuff, if you're not careful. And then, you know, then you're going to get the wrinkles and then you're going to get hyperpigmentation and molds and then, Mm -hmm. you know, could lead up to skin cancer. There's so many different things. But, you know, it brings me back to when, you know, I was, you know, I grew up and I was born in late seventies, grew up in the eighties. And, you know, when I would go and lay out, we, we would spend our entire summers at the beach. And so I would come back and be super, super tan. But even on my way to the beach, you always wanted to go looking good. Right. And so, like you said, your base tan, mm-hmm. um, we would go in our backyard and I would spray myself down with like, you know, baby oil. I would put lemon <laughs> juice in my hair um, or, you know, like the sun in stuff or whatever, which was turning my hair orange. But at the time I was like, oh, there's some blonde. There was no blonde in that at all. Um, but you know, the thing is, is it was like, burn me, burn me, bake me. And, and yeah. that's what I was like striving for. So I could turn brown and look all tan for the summer. Now I'm like, like you, I'm like, okay, SPF 50 or above. I mean, so I am super, I mean, especially with my kid, I am like, yeah. I mean, I put, so much sunscreen and lather him up, especially if we're going in the sun, he's got sunglasses, he's got hats, you know, all of that stuff is so important, but it's interesting yeah. to see when I was, you know, his age, my parents didn't care. They weren't like, Oh, go put on your sunscreen. They're like, Oh, get out yeah. there and be careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And my kids, they both, they both swim. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I know we've talked about this in another podcast. My daughter's, my daughter swims and she does water polo and my son swims and he plays baseball, so he's out in the sun, but he's got, you know, a hat on there. But he's interested in doing water polo as well. So there's potential for him to be out in the water more often. And, of course, you know, it's, you know when there's a, a limited supply of pools in the local area, you fight for whatever time, you know, as far as the uh, team's, the swim time goes. And, you know, here I am. I'm crossing my fingers hoping that they have something you know, they get pool time, you know, five o'clock and later, uh, because, you know, when, when my kids are out, they'll get, I mean, they remind me of me when I was there, they'll get, they'll get nice and brown. Um, but I have, I'm more conscious now. I'm giving them attention that I never got right. um, from, from my parents. I mean, my kids, my parents are just like, hey, just go play, get outside, go whatever. And we'd be in the yeah. canyon and mm-hmm. just go to the field, the park and all that stuff. But here, they, they, I, there I can I coat them with sunblock to where you can still see it and oh, yeah. you know and you got here let me get the back of your ear let me yeah. get under you know there is not one inch of them that's not covered when I know that they're you know going to be in the sun for an extended period of time but at the beach they want to play I have to reel them in and you know when they're eating their their chips or their sandwiches and like 
boom. Okay, they're stopped for two seconds. Let me just let me just reapply. Yeah. All. yeah let me <laughs> reapply. And that's the hardest because you know, especially when you go out and you're and you're, you know, if you go out with family and friends, you get caught up in discussion. But the one of the things that I have to do, and I've actually had to set my alarm on my phone on getting them to uh, you know, come back in, reel them in put some more sunblock because as you go into and out of water, all that washes off. So the reapplication is what gets a lot of people mm -hmm. is that they just don't do it. They might be safe the, for the first hour, maybe two, but if you don't reapply, you, you've, you've just exposed yourself to the opportunity or the potential to get, to get sunburned. So for us, it's just been about reapplication. We're good when we're leaving the house, but when we're out there, that's, that's a different story as far yeah. as keeping the, keeping the sunblock on. Well, our big thing too is, you know, think about the sand. So when you reapply, if you don't get all the sand off, then sometimes you miss that part. And then that one little section like on the foot or something <clears throat> like that gets burnt and it's just, not worth it. but, <laughs> yeah. um, but those of you guys that are just joining us, um, thank you for listening to random fit with Wendy Batts and my co-host, Mr. Ken Miller. And today we're talking about, you know, summertime activities and ways ways to rock your activities and rock the things you want to do outside, but also making sure that you're doing it safely and effectively. And I know we've mm -hmm. talked a lot, you know, since we've started basically talking about our families and our experiences, but I think then it's like, okay, I've got clients now that are ready for the summertime body. They mm -hmm. want to get into their bathing suit, which I'm like, where were you guys three or four months ago? But okay. Um, and then also too, you know, we have, a lot of um, clients that are getting ready to take vacations. And I know that was actually what kind of triggered this one was, um, you know, we've got some people that are getting ready to go on long hikes or they want to do different yeah. like swim trips or mm -hmm. go, you know, canoeing and things like that. And so we, we need to prepare their bodies for the activities that they're coming, you know, that they want to do. So therefore they feel good when they're doing it, they look good and they're not so miserably mm -hmm. sore afterwards. And, um, and so, you know, for, for, for Ken, well, I'll have let, let's. I'll ask you because again, I've got some stories that are kind of scary stories too mm -hmm. for people that didn't prepare yeah. the right way that I've seen firsthand. But let's start with just something as simple as hiking. Um, and I say simple; it could be a, an extreme hard hike. But let's just talk about hiking in general um, with right. your clients. Like, I mean, how do you prepare a client that's going to go for a hike? Um, it's actually that's. I just had a client that. Um, told me the other day that they're going to Hawaii and they planned on going on a hike to some falls, which I'm familiar with this hike. And knowing the, you know, the, the climb up, the climb down, how slippery, you know, the, 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 the trail is, you're on rocks, you're on roots. Um, you know, you definitely have to hold on to, you know, vines and branches that might be hanging out um, near the trail. So being familiar with where they're going um, gave me a little bit of a, a, a head start on what I need to prepare them for. So uh, for one, the conditioning, right? So if they're going to hike and it's going to be a, that particular hike's about a two mile hike. So getting them to do their homework and okay, I need you to go, uh, go half a mile today, three quarters of a mile, a mile, just to work them up to that distance or the, the approximated time. If you go to, you know, any kind of trip advisor type of website, and it'll give you some some pretty good information on on different places uh, that your clients may be going to. Um, but just, I mean, what, what we're talking about is being able to, um, you know, have the coordination, have the balance, um, be mobile. You know, because again, when you're on hikes, it's not just a straight ahead, straight up, straight down. You're not on it. It's not like you're on a treadmill and you just adjust the incline. Um, you have to go up, you have to go over, you have to lunge, you have to do box step ups. That's what that translates into is doing box step ups, box step downs, forward, sideways, turning, weighted, especially if you've got um, a camelback or some kind of uh, hydration um, pack on you. So I'll say, hey, bring your, bring your hydration pack. And let's fill it up with as much water as you plan on taking on this hike, which is hopefully, you know, going to be enough for, you know, what could be a, a four or five hour hike. And let's start off with that. Right. And if they don't have that, I've got a rucksack 
with a 20 pound plate that I can put in there better to over prepare than under prepare. And, uh, you know, and just have them doing different things. And if that, you know, on this particular hike, there's a, there's a waterfall at the end that you can swim. So I can make sure that, you know, they've got some, you know, it's just splash around type swimming, but you know, those are the things I start to think about. It's like, okay, imagine myself, okay, well, what I, what kind of conditioning do they, do they need to be in to do that activity? But also where, where do they need to be physically to be able to endure the ups and the downs and the, um, the, the slippery surfaces. I'm not going to water down my, my, my gym floor to get them. Okay. This is how slippery it's going to be. I'm not stupid, but you know, I just want them to, you know, have different, different levels of proprioception and, and different surfaces as best as I can do it. So that could be standing on a air X pad, you know, with one foot on a cortex, um, just something to where one foot might be in a different position than the other foot. Not that same parallel feet, you know, not everything's at 90 degrees, you know, and, and, and trying to accommodate what they're going to do physically as best you can in a controlled environment. Now, I think that's a really important part. And the reason I bring up hiking first mm -hmm. is because, you know, for those of you guys that, that have known me and um, have been around me, I used to live in Arizona and there are so many amazing hikes that you can do, you know, in 30 minutes, um, you could do them all day. There's just a lot of different places that you can go. And there was one in particular that we would do very often and I would do a lot with my clients. So again, we would work up into the conditioning and the same thing, like you said, you know, we would put them on treadmills, we would do unstable type exercises, you know, multi-planar exercises. I would put them on the stair mill so they got used to, you know, cause a lot of those is like, you have to walk up some stairs or, you know, you're walking up a very steep incline before you even get to the mountain itself. And um, so all the points that you made, but one thing too is often, we need to think about the temperatures and you know I, unfortunately there are a lot of people that would come and visit i say unfortunately because of this they would come and visit arizona which was a great thing however they weren't conditioned for the heat and you know people always say oh arizona is you know in nevada they're dry heat well there is there's a lot to be said for that without the humidity in the air and so oftentimes you don't realize how hot it is and you don't really see yourself for me i didn't really sweat that much but i would salt like my hat rim would be just filled with like a white salt rim because instead of like it would evaporate so fast and so um you know can I, tell me if you felt this ever happened to you but we were hiking with our with our clients and we actually had someone that was a what we called snowbird that would come in and they weren't used to hiking. They didn't train. Um, they didn't right. train uh, appropriately. And then unfortunately they had almost like a heat stroke type thing to where we had to call 911 and they had to get life flighted out of like off of the mountain, yeah. which if you guys have ever seen a mountain rescue, it is very, very scary. Um, and so when we're talking about this, we're talking because we want to make sure everyone's safe. And um, I don't know, like it was one of those things where I'm like, anytime you're hiking, you really need to do this. And so just just be super, super careful. So when you're also talking about on conditioning, that's one thing. But uh, you mentioned hydration. That is super, super important. Um, mm -hmm. And sunscreen. We talked about a little bit of sunscreen action. What about wicking clothes? You know, take yep. take the moisture off of you. Cotton, hi hiking in cotton or doing anything in cotton. Not ideal. It gets heavy. No. No, you get stinky. <laughs> you get, the stinky is the is the part, right? But right, uh, right. the, the biggest, I mean, since since the the um, the clothing technology has come out with with you know wicking fabric, I mean that's been huge. I mean, I remember, uh, you know, when I played football in high school, you know, what did we have back then? Right, it was just a cotton shirt, and if anything, what you, what did you do back then? You you cut off the bottom and you wore a half shirt. That's as much as you got. <laughs> But, but by the end of practice, I mean, that shirt weighed, you know, a couple pounds just because of mm -hmm. all the sweat, right? So, but now that we've got that technology that kind of pulls that moisture away from you, and of course, now you have socks that do the same thing, shorts that do the same thing. So, as far as letting, you know, giving off the moisture so that it can evaporate, and that's what keeps you, that's what keeps you cool. So, the materials you know, plays a bigger role than a lot of people give it credit for. So um, if it's, a, I mean, and there's, and it's affordable, right? It's not, mm -hmm. it's not like it was, you know, five, six years ago where it's like, oh man, that that's a pretty expensive shirt, right? Now it's like, it's, it's almost everything 
you know, that, that you can find, you know, you go to your Costco, you find a shirt that, you know, <laughs> has, has weak. So uh, I know that's, that's what I was saying on, on the exit aisle, you're, you're going to the cash registers and it's like, Oh, let me just look over here. It's like, Oh, it's eight bucks. I can just, I know, right? on there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like another shirt, honey. It's like, yeah, sorry, babe. Um, but it's summer. <laughs> I need to protect my skin. You need to. Right? So, and, and, so, and, so big yeah. hat is a hat, all that stuff. Hat, all hats important. are important. Very important. And so whether it's a baseball hat or like, you know, one of the, the cool, um, I don't know, what do you call them? I used to call them like Gilligan hats. I don't know what you call them, but basically. Yeah, the, the boonie, the boonie hats. It just, yeah. If you and, can cover your neck, um, that's a, that's covering the back of your neck is a big thing. And ears. As well. Yeah. And your ears. Yep. Yeah, I so I know and, how many times I've been sunburned up here. Oh, well, you know, and, and like I said, living in Arizona, too, one thing that we also often forget. And so these are just reminders. I am the worst with sunglasses. Um, and so our producer just said yeah. it's called a, buck, a bucket hat. So, yes, bucket, hat. bucket hat. Yes. <laughs> but I, I'm the worst Thanks, with Eric. sunglasses. I know. Right. Where would we be without them? But uh you know, and the reason I don't like sunglasses is the reason why I do, just don't wear glasses very often mm. is because they give me a headache after a while. I don't like anything sitting on my face. And so I'm very fortunate that I don't have to wear regular glasses right now. But as I age, I guess that's probably going to change. Um, but um, oftentimes your eyes also to take a big hit from the sun because of the glare from the pavement, the roads or mm. whatever it is that you're on. And so it's really important to protect not only just your skin, you know, hydrate yourself inside and out, you know, think about the clothing, you know, also think about your eyes, think about, you know, that type of, um, you know, what you can do protective wear for your eyes. And one thing that we did a whole podcast about your shoes, also super, super important. And we're talking specifically, I mean, now with hiking, there are so many different types of trail shoes. Mm -hmm. But even if we go back to our first conversation with the beach, I mean, they've got the swimwear shoes now made specifically for the beach. Um, I just bought the cutest pair of um, beach shoes that are like tennis shoes, but they're made specifically for the sand. They're awesome. Um, but, you know, <laughs> and but again, they're super cute. So now I just need to go to the beach. Um, but uh, yeah. You that's one prepare. thing that's missing. <laughs> yeah. I, and I'll say, you know, just you, you brought up um, some kind of eyewear. Yes. Um, and, you know, I, I wear prescription glasses. But uh, one of the best investments you can make is prescription glasses uh, with, with um, sh prescription shades. Really, one of my, uh, well, my eye doctor told me it's like it's not just the sun, right? So polarized lenses really help protect the eyes as well um, on top of the shade, but it's also the wind, you know, because mm -hmm. your eyes can get dry and when they get dry, they can get irritated and you're really tempted to um, rub your eyes um, from that vantage point, but protecting your eyes from, your eyes can get sunburned, right? I didn't oh, I know. know that. Oh, I did. <clears throat> and mine have. Yeah. So what happened? I mean, we're, well, you know, like they'll, they'll get really, you know, they, they get really red, like you said, really dry. And then I, I was just, they were really itching and, but they were like, it was almost at s certain times. Like I had really good vision, but I would like look and I'm like, what is going on with my eyes? And I had actually gone to get them checked. And now I have permanent damage done to them to where um, you can even see some yellow in my eyes, like where it should be mm -hmm. white. And it's not like I've got jaundice. It's nothing like that. That's actually from the sun that over time has, has damaged my eyes. And so there's right. really, you can't go back and fix that. And that's one thing where you don't think I would always wear hats. I was really good about being outside, really bad with wearing sunglasses really bad and it's right. not like they have sunscreen for your eyeballs so um but yeah i mean now like you if you look at people you'll see sometimes they'll have like little yellow dots mm -hmm. on the white part of their eyes and that's usually from sun damage yeah no my my eye doctor <laughs> first told me about it because i would go snowboarding oh, right yeah. and then she looked at my eyes and she saw that they had been irritated well i just came from a snowboarding trip and you know it was one of those things where um, my, my goggles, I, I lost my, I didn't have my goggles, which really sucks mm. when you're going down the slopes as fast <laughs> as I go, you know, cause I just, boom, I just bombed that hill. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but the wind had done a number on my eyes. She's like, okay, um, you got to protect your eyes. If you can get prescription glasses, wear them under your goggles 
And then we started talking about other activities that I was involved with. Like, you know, before kids, I was, I was out on the bay and sailing, um, you know, with, with some friends. And that was another thing, just the wind was just beating down on, on my eye, on my eyes. And they were getting irritated from that standpoint. And that's where now I wear shades where not just, not just shades, but they almost wrap around just be because. Little blue blocker keep, action. <laughs> well, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm knocking on that door, but <laughs> hey, hey, nothing um, wrong with that. Hey, but I, you hey, know you what? know what? You're protecting yourself. I feel I'm very good yeah. at that. <laughs> I'm actually really. I mean, just because of screen time, being in front of the screen. I mean, this. I know this. Is, we're kind of converting this into a little bit of eye care uh, for fitness, but uh, but as far as far as you know, blue screen goes. That, I mean, that's uh, that's that's something that you can do protect, but. I, if I know I'm going to be out on the water, whether I'm on a sailboat, a motorboat, on the beach, you know, I, I look at um, wearing a pair of shades, not just about the sun, but also protecting against the wind. So just the general elements. Um, overall, we need to think about when we're, when we're enjoying the summer weather, but you got to think about all the elements, not just, you know, the sun, sand, wind. Um, but water, you know, as far as water, um, you know, washing off sunblock as we, as we talked about earlier, but protecting your eyes is, is, is huge just because it's, it's just something that's exposed to, um, to, to the elements as well. So, I mean, that's something I kind of drop in on my clients every now and then. It's like, what are you going to wear on your eyes? It's like, what? I know. My, yeah. my shades. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it, it, like to your point, there are different ones that protect your eyes in different ways. So it's always good to make sure that they are polarized in order to make sure the UV light is, is um, you know, away from your eyeballs. But I think another topic, too, when we keep talking about, you know, hydration and, and I, I know this is a big one for you, Ken, but often we, we forget about it's more than just water. Like you want to think mm -hmm. about electrolytes. If you're going to be outside all day long, you know, it's not sitting there saying you need to power, you know, like just pound a bunch of, you know, Gatorade or Powerade or something with electrolytes. But, but it is important if you are going to be in that summer heat for, you know, for longer periods of time, because water, like it does serve a purpose. You definitely want to drink water, but you know, when you're out there all, all day, you're going to think that, you know, the electrolytes are going to, you need to, replenish your yourself and either through a drink or with foods and some of the mm -hmm. you know um foods that are rich in those particular minerals that's going to help balance your body out you know you can have things like bananas and you know olives nut butter leafy green veggies anything like that that's going to help give your electrolytes a, a boost um and also decrease some of the sugar because as you know unfortunately a lot of those drinks have sugar in them unless you find the zero sugar but then it's like, you know, just just choose your drinks wisely. They have water with electrolytes yeah. now um, that that you can also take with you. But if you know you're going on a long hike, um, I know for me, I would go to the Grand Canyon and I would do the hike in and out where there's like, don't do that. There's signs like don't do it in a day. And I'm like, watch this, buddy. I'm going to do this sucker in a day. <laughs> but right. I mean, yeah, we had to, you know, you pack your food in and out. And so every everything like to your point, when you're packing up a you know, um, your, your food and your drinks, you got to make sure that you're smart in your choices. And, you know, same thing if you're going on not just long hikes, but if you're going to be outside at the beach, um, you want to, you know, think about what can you bring with you that's going to be beneficial besides just, which is not beneficial, but it's usually the first thing to go if it's a beach trip is alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Got to watch out for that. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, and it's, it's an inevitability. For a lot of people but um i mean as far as you know food goes um we'll touch on the alcohol part in a little bit but um <laughs> what, you know water and my kids love watermelon if i go to the if i take them to the beach or anywhere that's out in the sun i gotta cut up a whole watermelon because i mean for one i know they'll eat it and you know as well as i do feeding kids is just as much about just getting them to eat as much as it is what to eat Right. So I know they'll they'll chow down on water. And the other part of it, uh, I mean, on watermelon, because I'm um, getting them to stop and drink water or, you know, and I, I try to refrain from juices just because of all the mm -hmm. sugar, like you're just saying. But, um, you know, things like water, oranges, chilled oranges, um, they'll I know they'll they'll chug down and they'll, they'll get a lot of stuff um, nutrient wise from there. So I'll 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 hide water by way of the food, the food sources that I give them. So watermelon, I know is just one of those things. Um, but uh, the, al the alcohol part is, 
is what I have to caution my my friends on more than anything else because they'll you know they'll put it into well, like one of those coasters and you don't know what it is but it's like all right have fun but you got to be responsible but just like anything are you else saying alcohol and sun don't mix that's exactly what i'm saying <laughs> it makes bad it makes for bad decisions you know how many day parties i've gone to in vegas or uh, you know it's like that is a bad recipe i actually used to lifeguard out in las vegas you know when i was just right out of right out of college and um, I was a lifeguard at the Riviera Hotel. And, you know, <laughs> Wendy, what do you do when you're in Vegas during the daytime? You, uh, you sit by the what pool. What do you do in Vegas all the time? <laughs> <clears throat> you sit when by the in pool. Vegas. Yeah. And that's all. They, and, and, you know, it just makes for bad decisions to where it's like, you know, that guy that's, that's in the pool that has no business being in the pool. You know, they've got their, their beat red already. And, you know, you can't tell a guest. It's like, Hey, sir, you know, you're looking a little burnt right now. You might, you know, unless it's an opportunity to, to sell some block, right? But, and, and then you combine that with, you know, you combine that with, you know, the alcohol. It's just, it's just bad. And then at that point in time, I was in, um, I was in massage school. Actually, I finished massage school. I was, I was working as a massage therapist for a chiropractor, but I was also working as a massage therapist at the, at the Riviera Hotel. So, Inevitably, the the morning after is when these these same people that are by the pool they're all beat red. Now they want a massage, right? <laughs> and you're like, I don't know if I can touch that because that's gonna hurt, right? That's so bad. that <laughs> that was the other thing. It's like no okay, deep here, tissue for you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, so here's a bottle of water. I think you I think you need to drink this before you get on the table. Yeah, and then just wow. all the stuff just oozing out of there. Oh. But you know, when you're when you're 22, you 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 take whatever job you can get. So I understand. Yeah, and <laughs> I've seen, and unfortunately, I'm like you. I've seen some crazy things happening. You know, at the pools and at the beaches and everything. And usually, there's some kind of alcohol involved. But remember, if you're going to do that, because we're not going to tell you guys not to do it, because you're going to do it anyway, just drink responsibly. <laughs> I mean, they even have it on the label right now. Drink responsibly, and then think about right. you know. Think about how long you've been out there. Try to make sure that you drink plenty of fluids and water and, and electrolytes in order to find that balance because balance is super important. But, you know, to kind of bring us back on topic, besides just talking about crazy times uh, with alcohol, because uh, we could do a podcast. Uh, yeah that well, they probably wouldn't want to air, but we no. could probably talk about some serious stories with um, things that we've seen um, with sun and alcohol for sure. But, yeah. you know, when it comes back to circling around with our, you know, with our clients and then especially with ourselves and our families, um, you know, there are certain things that we want to always keep in mind, you know, there are, are key things, but the biggest thing too, is not only, you know, talking to your clients, because most people understand about sunscreen and making sure that they have water and food and all that stuff when they're going to go on certain, um, you know, certain hikes or they're going to, on different trips. I think it's really important. And one thing that, you know, we could spend a ton of time on is, is really talking about exercising to prepare. And I know we talked a little bit about, you know, hiking and doing like the stair, stair mill and doing some cardio and then, you know, doing some different lunges. But think about if you're going to be swimming a lot, you know, make sure you've got good lattice sensibility. You know, you're going to be reaching. You want to make sure you don't kill your lower back. So, you know, practice on thinking about what it is that you're going to be doing, or if you have a trainer, um, you know, or you are a trainer, think about what your client's going to be going through and then just make sure that you've got the strength and therefore you're going to minimize the soreness so you can do it over and over. If you're on vacation, there's nothing yeah. worse than day one <clears throat> going on a, on a long beach trip and you're out in the, the waves. And this is what I hear often, like they're, they're on the beach, they're playing and I'll get a text day one, my shins and my calves and everything are killing me. What am I going to do? And it was mainly because they weren't training correctly. They weren't my client at the time, but they weren't, you know, training correctly for the sand. And you know how hard it is to walk in the sand and your oh, yeah. feet turn out because they're, you know, grabbing a hold with their toes and their feet turn out. And then all of a sudden their anterior ten or, uh, tip or the front of the shin are super sore. Their calves are really tight. Their lower back starts to hurt. So Kim, what do you tell your clients when you get that type of text <laughs> when they're there? <laughs> I don't well, know. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if, if they're my client, well, I treat them like any other athlete I might be working mm -hmm. with, right? So you look at it, you look at their load, right? When are you going to play? When are you going to compete? Um, what's your practice? What's your strength conditioning like? 
And then it's okay, well, what are you going to do to recover? So when, when it comes to a client that's going more for play and fun, uh, but there is some activity, I treat them almost the same. I mean, the conversations are almost identical to where it's like, okay, you have a, you know, if you're, if you're coming from the West Coast, flying over to Hawaii, it's a five, five and a half hour flight. Um, <clears throat> you know, make sure you drink one can of water for every hour that you're, that you're on the plane. When you get to your hotel, that way you're not dehydrated when you get there. And then, you know, do, you know, here, I want you to do a three, three dimensional hip routine. I want you to do an upper spinal twist, hip twist. Um, I want you to, you know, do some floor bridges, then go ahead and go have fun. You just, you know, prepare the body for what's about to happen. And then if they're on the beach, they're, you know, you know, I don't know how many times I've gone to the beach and, you know, had, I, I raced my brother or, um, you know, you do that Rocky thing, right. With Rocky and clever, not clever Lang. It was, uh, who's the other guy? Ap no, it was Apollo. Apollo. It was Apollo, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was Rocky. And I know we did a podcast on that, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rocky versus Apollo. And, you know, if I haven't seen my brother in a while or my friends, you got to do that Rocky thing, right? right. Um, without the big jumping in the waves and big high fives after <laughs> I beat him or something like that. But that's taxing. And then, so now it's like after the activity, um, go back to your hotel. I want you to do these stretches. And, you know, do a couple more floor bridges, doesn't hurt. And, you know, that way, if you've got a beach day, a hiking day, you know, whatever day, then you can say, okay, here's how you're going to load the body. Here's how you're going to unload the body. And, and like I said, the conversation is the same. So the strategies are going to be uh, very much similar as I would treat an athlete and a vacationer. You know, someone's got an active vacation coming. Yep, I'm right there with you. And I mean, and this is not just for summer, but I mean, it's for all sports to your point. Like if you're going skiing, yeah. you know, doing doing certain things to help the quads and glutes and hips and everything prepare. But I mean, mm -hmm. to your point, you know, unfortunately, what you hear about and what you read about most often is, oh, I'm going to the beach. Sun's out, guns out. It's all about the gun show, all about the pecs for the guys and all about the girls right. trying to get the butt lift, you know. So um, so when you're kind of looking at that, really, you want to think of it. It's really more than what you're going to look like. It's more of what's going to be in the best interest so you move better, feel better, and that way you can perform better in your entire mm -hmm. vacation and not feel like you're just, you know, sunburnt, dehydrated, you're sore. <laughs> Cause that doesn't make for a fun trip for anyone, especially for your family that has to listen to you moan and, and be upset about something, Com you know, complain. that's yeah. complaining. That's a better word. Yeah. <laughs> But um, those of you guys that are joining us, we want to say thank you. Um, we're, we're here uh, at a random fit show with Wendy Bats and Ken Miller. And we're talking about, you know, summertime activities and considerations for you to be able to rock the outdoor activities. And, um, you know, I think I think the main thing for me, Ken, before, you know, we, we kind of wrap it up, because I know we could talk about this all day. But, you know, we want to I think the key takeaways, if I'm missing something, I want you to tell me. But we've got number one, sunscreen, 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 wear it, put it everywhere, put it in every little crease behind your neck and your ears on your neck or um, on your shoulders and everywhere on your body. Mm -hmm. Reapply, 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 super important. Um, so sunscreen, hydration. So make sure you've got water, make sure you have electrolytes if needed. Um, I think that's the big thing too. We often just, we drink water because we want it. We need to drink water because we need it. And um, we want to think about too, what you're wearing versus what you're doing. So make sure you have, if mm. you're going on a hike or you're doing even a boot camp or whatever it is, you've got the right shoes, you've got the right clothing. If you're going to be out in the sun, wear long sleeves. I know people are like, you want me to do what? But if you wear long sleeves and a bucket hat, then that's yeah. going to help protect you from the sun. And then you actually will stay cooler. Um, that was also very weird for people to think about. We're not talking about a cotton shirt. We're talking about wicking fabric. <laughs> so right. I, I think that's a big one. Um, what am I missing? Well, I think to that point is just, you know, you don't have to wear the bucket hat and the long sleeve all day long, right? <laughs> have it. What? Yeah. Have, have it on for a good part of the day and just, you know, take it off, shut it off when it's time to, you know, take the pictures and, you know, the, the photos you're going to post to make your friends jealous on where you are and wish you were here and all that good <laughs> stuff. But um, I think you know, those are all great points. I, Which, by I, the way, I appreciate the, the postcard from Hawaii. I love that. Hey, easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Two Whitney and Tony. We're thinking yeah, of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Wish you were here. 
Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I think the only thing I probably I have to add to that because because you know protecting your skin is really big. But uh, just generally to anybody that's planning a trip, especially since we've been cooped up for over a year and people are just, I mean, getting, they just want to be out and they want to get on a plane. They're feeling more comfortable traveling is plan as much. Well, plan more on what you need to do to prepare your body for that trip than you do on what to pack. You know what I'm saying? Because more people are thinking, I got to bring this and blah, blah, blah. well, think, just give it a few weeks ahead of time and plan for the level of activity of, you know, if you're going to hike, if you're going to bike, if you're going to, if you're going to be on the beach, if you're going to swim, if you're, you know, if it's an act, more of an active vacation, plan more on how to prepare for that than what you're going to put in your suitcase. And that, you know, more work on the front end means more fun on the back end. And that way, when you come back, you're, you're sharing stories of how much fun you had and what you did versus how you got burned on your shoulders and, and how you had to hide out from the sun for the rest of the trip. So I think uh, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot of information. And, and I'm really appreciative of this information because uh, of, of this reminder, because I'm going to be out in the sun myself over the next couple months. So. Like I said, I want to keep this smooth baby like skin just like it is, <clears throat> not that leathery sooner sooner than later. Yeah, but Wendy, not, not the best look. <laughs> no, it's not. But uh, Wendy, thank you for spending your time here and, and uh, sharing all that, all the good reminders. But uh, that reminds me, next time we talk, we got to share some stories about uh, when we were young and youthful and, and the crazy things we used to do Ooh. at the beach. I mean, but for next time. Uh, so for all of you guys listening, yeah, I don't, I don't want to go down that road any more than, than it has no. to be gone. So, all right. So everybody, hey, thank you for listening to this episode of Random Fit with me, Ken Miller, and Miss Wendy Batts. If you like what you're listening to and want to hear more from us, let us know, and we will do what we can to, to give you what you want to listen to. So until next time, like, follow, subscribe, download, and until the next time, take care and be well.